At Highland Hill Farm, we grow many different kinds of trees. But when we grow these trees, we have to know how to prune them and take care of them. And right now, we're just pruning the trees. For pruning trees, you need two basic tools. First one is a nice cutters or pruners. And the second one is a pole pruner, such as this. This tree right here I'm going to prune for you is called an October Glory Red Maple. It's been in our field. This is its second winter. We planted it as a five to six foot tall whip tree. You can see it's grown fairly good. This is be its second time being pruned. Basically, when we start with pruning a tree, the first thing we want to do is we want to check the trunk of the tree and make sure there's no suckers growing off the base of the tree. If there's none, we start working a little bit higher up on the tree. This one does not have any suckers going off the base of the tree. Next thing we want to do is we want to go and see about how high up do we want the branching to start. This is like a medium size level for where the branching is. There's a branch right over here. You can't really see, but that's okay. That's fine. Some of the branching we'll have to go and we'll cut them up so that the, the first branching starts up a little higher. This one's already been pruned though. And we're going to work on this one. Since we don't have to cut any of the branches that make the, the first branching higher up, what we do next is we go through and we, we use our pruners correctly. This, this is a, a Falco's bypass pruner. You see the one side's blade and the other side is not. That's like the anvil side. And when you cut, the blade will cut on this side of the branch and this side will get pinched. So when you cut, you always want to keep the side you're keeping on the tree, this side, and the side that you're cutting off is on this side. So that's how you pr use these pruners. Okay, so our first cut that we're going to make, using our pruners properly, we're going to go up on these lower branches through here, and we're just going to go down and we're going to cut right above a bud. And when we prune, we like to prune right above the bud, and typically we don't prune on the other side of the bud down here or towards the middle. And the reason we don't do that is that the more you leave above the bud, that's going to die down to the point of the bud, and it's a point of where funguses and infection can go into the plant. So the, the bigger the port of entry it is, the more energy the funguses and bacteria have in order to infiltrate into the tree. So just pruning right there is just a good pruning practice. This stage of the life of the tree, it's not really too important, but every time you use pr proper pruning practices, it always makes the tree that much higher. Okay. Well, this is what I expect when we prune. You can prune another like quarter inch of it off without a problem, but that's fine and dandy for us. You can see there's two buds on either side, and that's where the new growth is going to come out for next year. And when that new growth comes out, it'll be able to grow out, and then you won't notice a real big stub on the end of it. So we're just going to go around the tree and just cut it. I guess it depends on how you want the tree to look, but that's basically what we're going to try to do. Now, for these guys up here, sometimes you want to bend these guys down and prune them and the taller you are the easier it is but if you pull it down too much it may break right there and if you can see how it has a V right there you don't want to pull on that because you'll have a problem and that's something that we're going to have to fix when we use our pole printer. So we'll just go around and hit them all real quick make sure you use the pruners properly and that's fairly good for what we're going to use for the pruners. The next step is we're going to grab our pole pruners and we're going to do the top part of the tree now. When we select which, you can see there's two branches left. And they're both coming out of the trunk of the tree about the same spot. And when we select which one we want to become the main leader, we want to select the one that's other higher up. So this one here is higher up than that one. So this one of these two would be choose, chosen over this. And we want to choose the one that's most in the center. And sometimes when you're pruning, you'll see a tree that will have three of them come out and the one in the middle is the weakest and that one in the middle is the one you want to keep because that'll keep the straightest trunk and it'll have the most secure attachment of the branches to the trunk of the tree. So that's kind of important to remember. But so what we're going to do is since this one I chose to be a little bit bigger of a trunk of a, for a center one and also more towards the center of the tree, we're going to go through and we're going to pull prune right about here onto the tree. And that's a little bit low, and this one we're going to prune up a little bit higher, probably right about there. And next year, all those buds there will grow up, 
and they'll grow up maybe four feet, and those will grow up four feet, but overall those will be taller up, so that will become the dominant part of the tree. That's basically how we want to prune the tree. Okay, well this is a, a prune that we did right up against the trunk of the tree, and this is how I prefer to have my prunes made on our trees. There's other people that prune in different ways. What I was taught in that school, I went to Delaware Valley College, and they taught me an idea called Code It, or Compartmentalization of Decay in Tree, by Alex Shago. And he said, basically, these rings that you see around the tree, those are natural barriers to stop decay from going into the tree. And if you cut so close, like a flush cut to it, you'll damage those rings, and then infection can spread from the branch into the trunk of the tree. So we usually cut right above the point where those rings are, so there's not a lot of wood left here for funguses to grow into and use, take energy from to drill into our tree. So usually have to cut it right there and uh, as close as you can to the rings without damaging the rings and you're pre pretty much good to go. Each tree has rings on it differently. So a tree with maple or a tree with oak, a tree with sycamore, they all have different rings. You just have to look at the tree and, and cut right above this where the rings are. Other trees that you can trim just in the same style that I just showed you is any type of tree that you're growing with a central trunk leader to it. It could be like a cherry, it could be a sycamore, a tulip poplar, an oak tree. Anything of large size that you want to have one single trunk going up to it and then eventually become a large, nice ornamental great tree. Is if you have any questions about trimming your trees, you can call Michael at Highland Hill Farm at 215-651-8329. We deliver and plant trees up and down the East Coast and we ship out of multiple locations in North Carolina, in Tennessee, and in Pennsylvania. Thank you.